So thank you for having me. I, I am Charlotte Rarconi. I am corporate vice president as part of the cloud and AI group within Microsoft. Uh, at Microsoft, our mission is to empower every person and organization on the planet to achieve more. And we plan to work with our customers and partners to be able to achieve that goal, which usually starts with digital transformation and a journey to the cloud. So I'm really excited to be able to spend some time with Mario today uh, as part of Blackboard and hear about their journey to the cloud and some of the opportunities that they've seen and really just talk through some of the key learnings as you guys are on your journey. So Mario, over to you. Hi, thank you. Good morning. Good morning from Austin, Texas. Um, my name is Mario Mendoza and I'm the team lead for the cybersecurity architecture and engagement team here at Blackboard. And I'm happy to be here. Fantastic. So Mario, I think the way that we'll kind of do this is a little bit of an interactive form. I hope you're okay with me asking you a few questions and then we'll just kind of riff off um, a particular set of topics and whatever comes to mind with you. Um, why don't we start with first the, the, the concept, shared responsibility I think is core to both of our companies uh, in terms of how do we help our customers and partners really achieve their goals um, with a level of social responsibility around that. And I know you guys have been on a journey to actually move your solutions to the cloud uh, you actually started and, and, and have been dealing with this in phases, and so there's probably some thoughts around the concepts of hybrid cloud. Of course, at Microsoft, we've spent a lot of time working on developing solutions for helping customers move their workloads, whether it's in the software development space or in the workload and DevOps space, as well as in the security space, but maybe we could just start and first, I'd like to ask you, why did you guys decide to move to the cloud? And also, how did you pick Azure? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so it all started back in 2016. We were, prior to that, BlackBot had been um, working out of data centers and co-location data centers, on-premise and, on and co-location data centers across the world. Um, and there was a shift in the strategy and management that um, we need to move to the cloud so that we can continue powering the social good that we do. Um, they don't, this allows us to not only scale at the need that our customers are asking us to be, but also present an agility in the evolution of the products that we have. Um, and since, two, uh, excuse me, since 2016, uh, we've been on that journey. And, and we selected Microsoft because BlackBot is a partner of Microsoft um, and BlackBot um, came out and asked, can you help us get there um, in, a, in a manner in which it's secure, in which it's, it's fast and it's capable and reliable. Um, plus a, a lot of our products utilized already the Microsoft core technologies. So it made, it made traditional sense for us to come up and migrate to that environment where it centralizes everything for us. Fantastic, fantastic. And did you find there were any um, unrealized challenges that you stumbled across uh, on your on your journey and as you got started? And were there any opportunities for learning that you would like to share for folks that, that may be on a similar journey so they could actually <laughs> get some value and learn from your mistakes, so to speak? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, when we first started, we did the traditional lift and shift model. Um, we said, okay, well, let's take let's take what we have already in the data center, and and move it to the cloud. So let's let's it's basically for those that know you know tech um, language, it's basically copy and paste, right? Let's copy everything we have, move it over. Um, obviously, it didn't work for a variety of reasons. Um, you know, a lot a lot of the migrations required a lot of testing, but. Um, we thought it would be a lot easier to move that way because you're moving all the services, resources. Uh, personnel already understand, you know, how an application works. Um, and, and it took us, a, a, you know, a little bit of time to do that. Um, and then we realized we needed to take, take a step back and say, I think we need to build an application in the cloud itself to be cloud native that can scale at the, the speed of the cloud can help us with, um, and they can rely on the services that you know a, an environment like Azure can provide for us. So, you know, after we took a step back and realized that um, 
it became much more clear for us. The the path to go forward all of a sudden was like this, you know, straightforward as opposed to going down the winding road. Yeah, it's a it's a really good point because I I do think uh, most people think first, hey, how do we lift and shift this workload, this traditional application that I run, and application development is very different if you are sort of a born in the cloud model versus perhaps wherever that application may have evolved on whatever technology it was built and optimized mm -hmm. for, and you know that's a that's a good point. I'd like to kind of double click on that if I could, because I do think the concept of DevOps is extremely important in terms yes. of not just how you develop, but how you deploy and run applications in the cloud. I know you guys actually, I think you're both a GitHub customer as well as an Azure DevOps customer, but yes. could you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, of course. Um, so we integrate development into the pipelines in a manner in which not only do we build it um, with a DevOps model in mind, so we provide it provides agility, right? It provides fast and effective use of coding and development techniques. But it also allows us, from a traditional security perspective, to be able to place security um, check-ins at the right time. Um, in the past, you know, the the traditional way of building security into a product was you build the product. Um, you test the product, you get ready for production on the product, and then security comes in and gives it the final check. And by that time, it's either too late um, to be able to place some controls in it, or security has to come up and work around the product, uh, perhaps setting up compensating controls instead of actually build, being um, a partner. The way that we work now with development teams and DevOps teams is um, we integrate security now from the ground up. So security comes in uh, we have some automated processes that check in um, during the GitHub repos or during the um, Azure DevOps integration pieces that, that we and we also see um, the plan way ahead. So we already know ahead of time where security has to come in, uh, where where we can automate the piece, and more importantly, where we don't provide an obstacle uh, because you know with ADO and, and DevOps everything is 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 speed, right? Everything is agility. Everything is. Um, no obstacles that we want to have in place because security has been sort of a roadblock in the past, and now security is a partner. How can we make it better for everybody? That's that's really that's good really to hear. Good. And I apologize if a little bit of, of reverb. Hopefully, I'm the only one hearing the echo. Um, but one thing I did want to come with, if we could move on to the security piece, mm -hmm. I, I actually think that's a really good point and beyond the agility and actually thinking about security as part of the design and development, which is a significant shift. And I think super important for you guys, as well as many other customers that we support, the types of information that you collect from customers is very sensitive, very confidential. Um, you know, I, I have a couple of thought or questions, I guess I should say, you know, in terms of compliance and certifications, at the infrastructure as a service level, how are you guys feeling about the cloud? And then as you're thinking about security more holistically now, which is what I heard you say, you know, what's your thought and guidance for folks thinking about multiple solutions versus really approaching it as a platform type of design element that's that's heavily integrated into your cloud provider? You, you know, there. There's pros and cons with each approach, I think, but it would be good to get your thoughts in terms of how do you guys think about that in terms of running your business and innovating moving forward, uh, particularly in the in the world and in business that you're in and the types of information you collect. Uh, uh, compliant in any of those assessment types was critical for us. Um, you mentioned earlier today the hybrid cloud, right? For us, the hybrid cloud means sharing some of the responsibility that we have, not just ourselves with our customers, but also, also ourselves with the with the uh, service provider, and in this case, Microsoft's Azure. Um, but at the same time, um, goes back to what you mentioned about 
you know, multiple platforms, right? On the, the what I call the legacy, the old way of doing things, we had almost a platform for everything, one platform for uh, security service one, one platform for security service two, security service three, and sometimes it, it becomes unbearable, right? We, uh, security teams can become, um, you know, managing uh, administrators for 30, 40, 50, 60 solutions. And when we looked at moving to the cloud, we decided to take a step back and revamp the whole aspect of it and said, what can we do to solidify and consolidate some of the solutions? Um, and that's where Trend Micro came in and helped us. So instead of having a product for, for example, public integrity monitoring, you know, another product for host-based IDS or IPS, or another product for antivirus or endpoint solution, uh, protection solution, we looked at we looked at Trend Micro's product and came in and helped us um, consolidate five, six platforms into one. Not only that, but also um, it integrated perfectly with uh, the agile model that we were looking to implement. So for us, it was sort of a win-win. We got compliance, we got consolidation, we got agility. You know, it was, it, and it worked in Microsoft, which not a lot of providers can do. Um, you know, it was, it was, it was awesome for us. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, Geez, did I leave anything out? Are there any other key learnings, key messages? I know it's been quite the journey. Uh, are you guys happy with your progress? Are you seeing some of the benefits of the cloud in terms of your ability to scale, You know, your ability to actually manage in the hybrid cloud model where you do have some parts of your business that still sit outside of Azure, for example, or potentially in other clouds or on premise? just would love to get sort of some final thoughts from you in terms of how things are going and the progress that you're seeing and the benefits that your business has has gained from this transformation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the journey never ends. Uh, the more we see the benefits of the cloud, the more people want to actually take advantage and, and begin, you know, their own move. Uh, for us, it, it's a combination of things. Is if we move an application to the cloud or a product to the cloud, it means that it's going to be secure because it's going to be built in properly. It means it's going to be in a um, service provider that's going to be reliable for us constantly, like Microsoft that has um, regions and Azure data centers all over the world. Um, it means that we have compliance. So when we take a, a step back and look at what is the next product that's going to migrate, um, you know, I think the company realizes that, you know, what provides the most benefit for our customers so they can continue providing um, and empowering their social good. Uh, but not only that, but also um, it, it's important for us to understand that customers entrust the data in us, customer provide, um, you know, their, their, um, their most important assets, I would say, you know, in the products that they use for us. And we want to make sure that that we provide that level of comfort, security, honesty, and trust in them as well. Fantastic. Thanks, Mario. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the partnership, by the way. Yes. Uh, Rick and Leah, back to you guys. Thank you so much, Charlotte, for sharing your years of experience and expertise with us. And Mario, wow, that was really fascinating to hear your journey, and thank you for sharing some of your learnings with uh, everyone that's online today. Uh, just looking at the clock, it looks like we have a few minutes for questions. So if we, if you haven't yet, can you please put your questions into the Q&A uh, area there, and we'll ask some questions for Charlotte and Mario. Yeah, I'm gonna have a quick scroll through here, see if I can, I'm not gonna pick it out random, I'm gonna pick out a quality one, let's have a look. Uh, how about this one for Charlotte? Which are the new security challenges that your customers are faced with when migrating to cloud platforms and which pre-existing ones need to be approached in new ways? So what are the new ones and what are the old ones that people have to approach differently? Well, I think uh, top of mind today, I would say what's been really interesting for us is with the COVID-19 pandemic hitting, we actually saw a rapid acceleration to the cloud as many businesses and customers and people in everyday life had to immediately move to a remote um, accessibility environment. And so uh, we almost saw this digital transformation curve that we've been talking about um, that's been a multi-year journey 
really mm -hmm. about two years worth of progress was made in about two months time, right? At the beginning part of this year at a global level, that was a pretty astounding uh, a change that we had to respond to. And security was one of the biggest things that we focused on because your endpoints where people are actually accessing uh, their work environments, their school environments, their personal information, all kind of went from more structured frameworks, people sitting in, in traditional corporate settings to accessing from their home, accessing from a variety of devices. And so I think what's been immediately top of mind for us is making sure that the trusted, reliable, um, set of products and services that we offer continue to be very secure with that rapid change we've seen in accessibility across the globe. We continue to see security be a very top of mind as more and more workloads in general have been moving to the cloud. There, there's more types of sensitive data. Um, there's been more access points. I think, I think you know the example I just walked through is indicative of a broader trend where mm -hmm. we have to be constantly vigilant in terms of ensuring customers' data is secure, it's only accessible by those who need the accessibility, and that regardless of what environment you're running in, whether you have your data kind of spread across multiple different configurations, be it in the cloud or on-premise, that we can actually serve those and that we can keep them trusted at all times. And so, you know, we we continue to spend a tremendous amount of time and energy there, uh, ensuring that as the world moves more to having things in a cloud environment with broader and broader access points, how do we make sure that that trusted and reliability and secure access continues to be um, adhered to at all times? So. Yeah. Yeah, it, it chimes. It chimes very closely with something my colleague Mark Nunnikoven says when he's talking about security. He says uh, it's about making sure that a service or a product or whatever uh, works as intended and only as intended. And I think that's kind of the challenge that you're talking about with that answer. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Leah. Do you want to dig out a question from Mario from that list? Yeah. Uh, that yeah thank <laughs> the you. List well, we well, yeah, while you were talking, I was able to find a really good one from Mario. Uh, you talked, um, you know, during your interview a little bit about your DevOps journey, and I thought this question was perfect. Very simple. It says, how do I get my security team talking to my DevOps team? You know, it's uh, it, it's actually, I got a really good use case for this. It is a really good question. Um, we had that challenge too. When we were, uh, you know, security sometimes can be, sort of a, a catch-22, either you do too much or you do too little. Um, for us, it was getting everybody else to partner in security. Um, so, it, you know, security is important at our company. Um, our teams understand and want to do as best as they can, but they want guidance, guidance from the security team. Um, so the way we worked it was we had empowered our DevOps teams um, to have some sense of um, ownership in the product itself, right? By allowing the teams to have access to their own data in a controlled manner, um, away from what security responsibilities are, obviously, but uh, giving them an insight into what their data looks like in a security dashboard and a security console uh, was wonderful. That means that those teams want to have those uh, that data look green. Green means good, right? So everybody wants green, um, and so. You know, we said, look, you know, your your dashboard looks green or almost green, um, and we can't tell you about the other teams, but they're working to get greener, right? So we created a sense of sort of gamesmanship in it. We kind of gamified it a bit, um, but at the same time, it means that they come now to us, you know, reach out to us directly and say, how can we make it better? Can we work better to do this? Can how can can we make this environment much better than what it was before? And that's that's been great. It's also been fantastic. Yeah, I love that. I love I love that idea of gamifying it and, and engaging the development community that way. I mean, what a change we've seen in the security industry over the last you know, 10, 15 years where security used to be able to be in control and now it's that partnership and, and that's what you've developed there. Uh, excellent, thank you so much. And I think at this time, just we're running short on time. So I'm gonna thank again, uh, Charlotte and Mario for sharing your expertise and your journeys with us today.